Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Is he worthy? Oh, just only praise him if he's worthy. Yeah, because if he's not, then you got a right to sit there. But if he's worthy, hallelujah, if he's worthy, then you ought to praise him. Get, get something in your spirit that he has done for you. Hallelujah. Think of something. A songwriter said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done, hallelujah, for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Somebody cry out, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless his name, hallelujah. Bless your name. God, we praise you. We exalt you and we magnify you this morning. Hallelujah. Your good and your mercy endures forever. Father, we thank you for this is a day that you have made. We are able to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for to see the rising of the sun, God. Thank you that we could get out of bed this morning and get dressed ourselves and come to the house of God. We bless your name today, God. We thank you for your spirit God. Thank you for your spirit in the house this morning. Thank you for healing and deliverance in the house this morning. Father we ask you to bless those that are troubled this morning. Those that are depressed and oppressed God. God we ask you to just speak a word of peace to them God. Father we thank you for dwelling in the secret place of the most high. Thank you for being under the most shunda. Thank you for being under the shadow of the almighty oh God. We bless your name. We praise you. We thank you for your good. Hallelujah. You're good. We thank you for your good and your mercy does endure forever. Amen and amen. Give him more praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Are you glad to be in the house on this morning? If you're happy to be in the house, can you give him praise this
husband has on her high heels today. And already, she may be here an hour. She's a bitch off walkout, but she's tough. She's tough. He reigns, he reigns forever. He reigns forever. Council, amen. And one of the things that the lesson talked about was the eternal uh, praise that or go on in heaven, amen. And 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 that blessed me so much because I realized, amen, we can worship here, amen. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge we have in heaven. No more crying. No more dying. <clears throat> None of that stuff. You can worship. So it takes. It, uh, it, it takes, it, it may be a challenge while we're on this earthly realm. It may be a challenge to worship. It, it, may, it may be challenging. Uh, somebody say challenging. Now, you don't have to agree with me. I'm saying it, it can be a challenge. Amen. But you have to go beyond the challenge because he doesn't change. The same God who is in heaven it's the same, moving by his same spirit here on earth. And whether you're on the earth or whether you're in heaven, he is worthy of the praise and the glory and the honor. Amen. So don't let people, don't let circumstance stop you. Because if that's the case, then it's your circumstance that is greater than your God. And I don't know any circumstance that is greater than my God. Can I get a witness? This, I said, I don't know. Well, Pastor Robinson, you ain't been, I, you may, I may have not gone through what you've gone through. But there can't be a circumstance greater than God. Can't, it, it just can't be. It just can't be. Tell somebody, it can't be. Woo. Oh, amen, amen. <laughs> and, and if you feel that way, uh, Job shared with Sister Job when she said, why don't you just curse your God and die? And uh, Job said, you, you speak like a... Um, um, an unintelligent <laughs> individual. Amen. So I'm telling you, and that's not being, uh, you know, I'm not knocking what we go through, but he reigns, y'all. He's the God of all gods. He's the king of all kings. And if the four and the 20 elders bow down, come on, somebody. Nation, all nations and kindreds bow down. Amen. Regardless of whether it's a pandemic here or not, somebody has to understand he reigns forever. He reigns forever, and he's worthy of the praise and the glory and the honor. Thank God. Thank you for those who are watching via a live stream um, in the parking lot Zoom or Facebook Live in the parking lot 96.7. Thank you so very much, amen, for being a part of the services this morning. Amen. We're worshiping, and we're magnifying, and we're exalting God. And, and, and I believe that it, man, tomorrow I should be worshiping. And I should be magnifying and I should be exalting God, amen, because he reigns forever, amen. We had an awesome council one day, one uh, service yesterday, thank God, amen, for the services, amen. Certainly Bishop Brewer is sharing, 
Amen. Even in his challenged health condition, shared the word of God. Amen. And it was good to see one another's faces. Amen. The council, some we hadn't seen for a long, long, long time. But it was good to see one another. Amen. As we go forth in Jesus' name. God bless you. Good to see Evangelist Doreen Pelzer. Amen. The sanctuary. Amen. This very morning had been in the hospital facing some challenges, but thank God she's here. Amen. For that we give God the glory. Amen. Amen. I praise God. We, let, we must continue to praise God for one another. We must continue to praise God for one another. We must continue to praise God for what? One another. He keeps doing awesome and great things in all of our lives. And we give him the glory and the praise and certainly and certainly the honor in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Now, certainly, let's not forget, at the conclusion of this service, we'll have a turkey giveaway. Amen. For those of you uh, uh, that are going to be uh, preparing turkeys, something like that, the Lord has blessed us. Amen. Now, here's the key. Here's the key. If you're not going to use the turkey, don't, 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 don't take it. How'd that sound? Amen. If you're not going to use it, don't, don't take it. Well, the rainy, it may be a rainy day. <laughs> Well, yeah, don't be not going to use the turkey. Don't take it. Someone else can certainly utilize it. Amen. And be blessed by by its uh, its presence and their in their possession. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for your love gifts on last Sunday uh, birthday. Uh, I was I was just surprised. Sur I really now I don't normally get surprised. I don't normally get surprised. I, you know because I got my surprise meter on. Amen. But that was just a blessing. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the gifts. Amen. And the well wishes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We're preparing ourselves this time to give in the kingdom of God. What a blessing it is to give in God's kingdom. Amen. We, we're grateful and thankful for what he has done and is doing in our lives individually and corporately. Individually and corporately. Amen. I know we have some blessed folk in here this very morning. Amen. How do you know, uh, Bishop, how do you know, Pastor, that there's some, if you're here, you're blessed. If you are certainly in the sanctuary, you're blessed. So there's blessed folk in here uh, this morning. They're passing the uh, baskets, correction, they're passing the envelopes for those who need the envelopes. Amen. And those who are giving by uh, Cash App or Givelify or PayPal electronically. Amen. Certainly you may govern yourself accordingly in regard to that even this morning. Listen, sisters and brothers, you may possess much, but you own nothing. Everything you have and I have belongs to God, and we must be good stewards of what God has placed in our care. We must be good stewards of what God has placed in our care. We have to be good stewards of what God has placed in our care, and for that we thank him and we glorify and certainly we magnify God for moving in that capacity. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to give. Amen. I'm going to ask you to you hold your offering in your hand. If you've already given electronic, you just hold your hand up. I'll be fine as well as we prepare ourselves in giving even this very, this very morning. Grace is Heavenly Father. All that we have needed all that we need your hands have provided for us and this morning Lord we say thank you for the provisions that you have made for us and are making for us thank you Lord for allowing us to be good stewards of what is placed in our care thank you Lord Jesus for understanding Lord that it comes from you and because of our appreciation unto you, we give back unto you that which you've given unto us because you always reserve that which is for yourself. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the liberal giver. Thank you, Lord, for the person who understands the joy it is in giving to your kingdom. And today, this very morning, we give unto you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Forevermore we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Before we before we start, before we give, before you before we move, amen. Now don't forget now because of what's happening in our world today, amen. They they started the they started the Black uh, Friday sales already. How many know that? 
Some of y'all were in Walmart. I know that. Y'all would say, started already. Now, I say that to us. We're, most of us are in here adults, so y'all understand. The, you know. So here, here's the point. Don't waste your money buying something you can't afford. Don't waste your money and not pay your electric bill. And that makes no sense. Now, how old is the little one right there, uh, Sister Marley? How, how old is she, you know? 20, okay, that's like, so one, 23 months, almost two years old, all right? Almost, almost two, almost two. She's two? Close enough, okay. 22 months, she's one years old, okay, all right. Listen, now, as cute as she is, she don't need a whole lot of crazy stuff. And I'm talking to y'all, too, all of us. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we give people stuff they don't even need because they want to have a beautiful, wonderful Christmas. The devil's a liar. We, I learned that many years ago from experience. We used to get Angie's stuff for Christmas. Never opened them up. Wasted my money. I learned. So I'm trying to help somebody else. Don't waste your money. Uh, one or two things are so nice. Get some nice clothes and say, God bless you. We'll see you in January. Amen. And be a blessing. Amen. That's, all. That's enough of that. Okay. All right. Amen. As the pastor and pastor this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise team is coming back momentarily as well. Yes, wow. name. For those who did not receive communion on last week, amen, we're making a special time period at the conclusion of the service, amen, to serve you communion. If you would just line up on the side here at the conclusion of the service, we will accommodate you in regards to receiving communion, uh, those who were not here on last, last Sunday, amen. So keep that announcement in mind uh, as well. Christ Gospel Praise Team in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Exceedingly above. Thank you. 
able to do what he promised. Yes, God. God is able to do what he promised to do. Wow. So the scripture says, uh, <laughs> now unto him that is able to do, get this, get this, that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. According to the power, so we really have to expand our thought process on the authenticity of our God able to do I'm here to tell you this morning you may not like this but God's not going to do what you he cannot be manipulated I tried that before it don't work really I have I've, I've tried that before it doesn't work but he's God his authenticity, his awesomeness is just, whew, it's really out of this world. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Thank you, praise team. He's able to do. Don't give up on God. Mm -hmm. He won't give up on you. Amen. He won't give up on you. Our theme for this month has been focusing on the family like last month, amen, and thank you those who have been on the panel, the participants, the moderators have done an excellent job, amen I appreciate that in your sharing, amen and certainly in going forth in Jesus' precious name thank you for those who have been bringing coats in amen, to help those who are in need of coats uh, as the cold season is uh, certainly approaching, we greatly appreciate that in Jesus' name. And finally, thank you for those who were able to come this past Wednesday and get the shots, and whether it was a, a flu shot or booster shot or the initial uh, vaccinating shot, amen. And I know I understand now, five years and over now, you can get your, your shots if you so well, you really want to do that, amen, in Jesus' name, amen, so that you can protect yourself and protect others. Uh, as well. We finally say we salute our veterans, amen, those men and women who have served our country, amen, uh, and I greatly, I salute you, I really, I salute you in Jesus' name, amen. I found out, I said, was it a couple of weeks ago, I was watching, listening rather, as a, a Minister Al, he works, he works with the desk during the, some of the weekdays, for the thrift store, he's our he's our security man. All right, he's our security man, and he wears his Vietnam veteran hat there on the table, and he has one eye on the door, the other eye is on the book. Amen. But as he was talking to what, an individual this past uh, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, Amen. They began to talk, and uh, he was should they be built for military uh, veterans, and. Uh, I, Minister Al said something that caught my attention. He said he received a purple heart. Now, for those who may, before, before you clap, before you clap, you know, you know, purple heart, red heart. A purple heart indicates that a person has been injured, injured in, uh, in, serve, in the service. Amen. I never knew that. I never knew that. Uh, do you still have the purple heart thing somewhere? Okay, good. And I, so I salute you. And all of those, uh, all those who are military, past and present, will you just kind of stand up, you know, worked, served in the military? Come on, don't be afraid. Before I call you up, amen. What, guys, what branch? Amen. All right. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We salute you. All right, we salute you, amen, and we appreciate. Now, I do understand there's a difference between wartime uh, service and non-wartime service, amen, but whether it's wartime or not, it's a lot, it means a lot. You, brethren, you, sister, are protecting our country and protecting us, and we 
thank you so very, 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 very much. Amen. I've had Associate Pastor Larry Matthews to share with us the word of God today. Amen. I certainly appreciate, amen, his stick to itness. Amen. As he and Pastor Moon are going forth, amen. We all realize, amen, we can't do it. One person cannot do it in and of themselves. Amen. And so we go into this together so that God will be exalted. Amen. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support, your continued support. Amen. I don't mean financially, but we do appreciate that. But your continued support in the kingdom work. Amen. Because this is kingdom work, sisters and brothers. Amen. It's kingdom work, and we honor God for that. So Pastor Larry Matthews has come this time. Bring forth the word of God in Jesus' name. We stand and give God a hand of praise this morning and just clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you just clap your hands for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? That's kind of like a faint clap, but can you clap your hands and give him praise and give him glory? Tell your neighbor he's worthy of the praise. Woo! He's worthy. Glory, we honor Bishop Robertson, our Pastor, First Lady Robertson. Praise the Lord. We honor you this morning to our assistant pastor, Evangelist Boone, to our ministerial staff at large, to my wife, Missionary Melody Matthews, and all the saints and friends. Again, we say praise the Lord. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. I say God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Glory. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take His word and just to rest upon his promise just to know the saying the Lord Jesus And how I brought him over and oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Trust him, trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him, precious Jesus, Savior. with me. Do you know that? <laughs> Will be with me till the end. So Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him over Oh, 
Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more, oh, for grace to trust him. I got to thinking about that. And if I'm going to trust him more, something had to have happened in my life that drew upon my faith that in this moment, in this time, I need to trust you more. So Lord, I need more grace in this hour in what I'm going through so that I can trust you more. Oh, for grace to trust him. Trust him more. And as I was singing that song, the old song came in my spirit and it said, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until Trust in the Lord. That's the kind of stuff I'll be singing around the house. Make up my own little composure. You know what I'm talking about, Vantus Cammy, right? <laughs> ah, hallelujah. The song said, I'm going to stay on the battlefield. How long? I didn't hear too many of y'all say, till I die, but. <laughs> I'm going to trust in the Lord. Oh, for grace. Because of his grace. Because of his grace. <laughs> because of his divine favor. Because of his divine empowerment. Because he is able. And not only is he able, he has enabled us to be partakers of the divine nature in light. I'm not going to be long, uh, and I just want to stir up your pure minds, as the scripture says. And just to encourage you this morning, I want you to turn with me to the book of in the New Testament, Matthew, chapter number 24. The book of Matthew, chapter number 24. How many really going to trust in the Lord? How many are still trusting in the Lord? Oh, for grace to trust him more. That, that was just ringing in my spirit when I was getting ready for church. The song just popped in my spirit. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know. Can somebody say, I know. 
and I know that thou art with me. Will be with me till the end. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Book of Matthew, chapter number 24, you have it, say amen. amen. And after I read this, I want you to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 54, verse number 14. Allow me to try your patience this morning and read the whole chapter. Is that all right? Because I believe that as I was thinking, I thought back about every time at the end of the year or during the holidays or a major holiday like New Year's Day, especially a New Year's Eve night, Many times you'll see a lot of law enforcement out on the roads. And they're out on the roads to make sure that people aren't driving impaired or inebriated. Making sure that they have not consumed too much of those alcoholic beverages. Whatever your taste may be. I didn't get no amens on that. But. <laughs> and they have, and they have what they call a sobriety check, sobriety checkpoint where randomly they'll pull certain drivers over randomly to see if you've been, or if you have consumed too much alcohol. And they want to see what's in your system to see if you are sober enough to be driving an automobile whereby you won't have an accident, harm, or even kill someone. So they perform the sobriety check to see what's in your system. Praise the Lord. And I believe every once in a while in the body of Christ, there must be a sobriety check according to the word of God to see what's in your system, to see what's in your mind, to see what is holding you together or not holding you together. How have you been driving through this world? What is stabilizing you that you can soberly see and recognize what's going on in this world today. Somebody say today. So much so that I can recognize that in the times that we live in, there are perilous times. Not only will, will they come, but they have come. Can I get a witness? In the last days, the writer said, perilous times will come. We'll deal with that. In the book of Matthew, the sobriety check this morning, it reads, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Let me read that again. Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse number five says that for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and do what? And shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. 
But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. And these are the beginnings of sorrows. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall, is that word again, deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And then he begins to speak about futuristic events that are close upon us. And when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Therefore, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they would shall de deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. He's talking about the blood that's going to be so high that it comes up to the bridle of the horses. Verse number 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall appear the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Real quickly, I want to read from the book of Isaiah, 54th chapter, starting with verse number 13. Talking to the nation of Israel, the prophecy that went forth concerning future events and the children of Israel knowing 
the God of their salvation, being the elect. And it says, verse number 13, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great peace, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Did you believe that for your family? Let me read that again. And all the children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt not be far, thou, thou shalt be far, thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me, saith the Lord. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. But no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, that is formed against thee shall prosper in every tongue that rises against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness God says is of me saith the Lord no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm almost done. But I want us to recognize and I want us to realize and I want us to be cognizant of the fact that time is winding I said, time is winding up. Jesus said in his word, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word will abide, how long? Forever. And you can look around you. You can look at the sign of the times. You can look at the crazy, crazy time that we're living in. You can look at, at, at the fact that we're getting to a time where people are trying to redefine what is truth. What is truth? What we knew and know to be truth is being undermined every day right before our eyes. So much so that a lie is being switched for the truth. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, perilous times will come. He also said in the Bible that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Lord. For in that day they were marrying and giving in marriage. What's he talking about marrying and giving in marriage? Your wife could be my wife, and your husband could be my husband. And we can, it ain't nothing wrong with swapping wives. And sw the world at that time had become so evil. The world at that time had become so wicked that man's thoughts were only evil continually. They couldn't think of anything good. And God said, all flesh the animal kingdom, mankind, 
had been desecrated to the point that God said, I'm going to destroy man. There was a group of angels that came down and found daughters of men to be fair and they took amongst them wives. And you got to understand the plan was his seed against her seed. The seed of the woman against the seed of the serpent. Praise God. And the, and the idea from the serpent was that I want to pollute the human race so that the Savior would not come. So there were a group of hybrid beings walking the earth known as the Nephilim giants. I ain't got time to get into all that. But you do realize that when the children of Israel went into the promised land, the land of Canaan from the heritage of Canaan, that wicked race that God told them, go and spy out the land. And they went out and spied out the land of 12, from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And they came back and they said there were giants in the land. And we were as grasshoppers in their sight. But Joshua and Caleb said, whoa, ho, wait a minute. We are well able to possess the land. And before that, God had given the command to possess the land. I have given you the land. The question is, whose report do you believe? And because of unbelief, they wandered in the wilderness and were not able to go into the promised land. Later on, God would send Joshua into the land and he told, because of this hybrid giant type of race of beings, you wonder why God would ever command his warriors and his servants and his soldiers to go into a land and kill every one of them. Man, woman, boy, girl, and animals. What kind of sadistic God do we serve? That he would command them to go into certain parts of the land and kill every one of them, man, woman, boy, and girl. Because of this polluted race of beings who had defiled humanity, God says, I need to wipe them out. Abraham started it. Moses started it. God says, I'm going to send my angel before you. And he's going to assist you in declaring out this hybrid race of beings who have polluted the human race. One of them, his bed was 16 feet long. Og, King Og, the, the Jebus, Jebusites and the Amorites, and the Canaanites. There were seven tribes, some in the hills, some in the plain, some up in mountains. But God says, I want you to root them out and kill them and destroy them all. When you root out the vestiges of sin, you cannot leave not one iota. You've got to get it all out. You cannot allow one vestige to stay there and cause that cancer to run through the whole body. God says, root it all out for a little leaven. Well, leaven the what? The whole lump. God said back in that time, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Lord. You got to realize that the book of Job picked it up and he said those angels who left their first estate, those angels who crossed over the boundary into humanity, which they were not supposed to do. The Bible says in the book of Jude that God has them chained in everlasting darkness. It's just going to come a time when those same angels are going to be loose from the pit. And the Bible tells us that those who are alive, now let me put a frame of reference here, because at that time, we the saints have already been raptured. 
but woe to those who are left on the earth for there will be a time of great tribulation such as never was before. And then there will be war in heaven. Satan and all of his angelic hosts will be relegated to the earth realm. And the Bible says woe unto them at that time. Do you wonder why you need to perform a sobriety check? Do you wonder why you need to see where you are to gauge where you are in your spiritual life? Do you, need to, do you wonder why you need to see and gauge yourself to see where am I in my spiritual walk? Am I walking as uprightly and circumspectly as I should be? Am I aware of the times? Am I listening to the voice of the Lord? Am I seeing more clearly as I should be seeing? And if you were to look at this world system today, you, if you didn't know Jesus, and if you don't know Jesus, some stuff is coming. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to warn you to open up your eyes and know what time that it is. You got hundreds and thousands of QAnon followers. I hope I'm not stepping on your toes if you are a QAnon believer. But the QAnon believers were assembled in Dallas, Texas last week. And they were assembled in Dallas, Texas at the site where John Kennedy was assassinated because they believed, I'm talking about deception, they believe at that day and at that time and at a certain hour, Bobby Kennedy wasn't really dead and that Bobby Kennedy was going to come back on that day, reveal himself, and he's going to join ranks with Donald Trump and take back the presidency. This is the kind of crazy stuff that's going around in the world today. Don't think you can't be deceived. Now, I know you're not going to believe that kind of stuff, but the Bible says when I just read, except the, the days be shortened, even the elect would be deceived. But we got to know and believe and have our anchor in the word of God. You've got to know what you know, 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 what you know. And what you know cannot be fairy tales and fables. It's got to be based on the word of God. Jesus Christ being a true cornerstone. So he said, let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> Neither let it be afraid. We got saints of God who can't sleep at night. Worrying about this and worrying about that. And it is not God's will for us to worry to the extent that you cannot get a good night's rest. When God said in his word, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I read that scripture from the book of Isaiah because I'm saying to you that I don't care what's going on. God is on my side. I don't care what is being said. I don't care what is happening. I don't care what they take, what they stop, what runs out. God is on our side. I said, God is on our side. Get up if you're on the Lord's side. Get up if you're on the Lord's side. Get up if you're on the Lord's side. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We used to sing that song 
You may be seated. You may, we used to sing that song, and I don't think that, I don't think that the choir recognized the power of the song when we were singing it. Because the song said, power belongs to God. Trust in the Lord at all times. Pour out your heart before him. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow by day. I'm persuaded come with me. And then we would say, and now trouble behind me. I've got great joy before me. Power belongs to God. But he says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. And guess what? It shall not come nigh thy dwelling. He said, behold, I'm the one that made the blacksmith. I'm the one that allowed the blacksmith who is over the anvil, who is hammering out the iron, I'm the one who gave him his breath. I see what he's doing. I see the weapon that he's making. I see the craftiness. And I'm telling you, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Let them scheme on the job. Let them scheme in the neighborhood. Let them lay, let them lay awake at night trying to devise your demise. And let them think of all kinds of ways. God said no weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon that is formed against you. Now listen to what he says. He didn't say that it wouldn't be formed. He didn't say that it would not be formed against you. He did not say that it would not come against you. See, some of us don't want nothing. We don't want no aches. I don't want no pains. I want to lay down in the flowery bed of ease. No, that ain't what the Word says. The Word of God says, yea, and all that live godly shall do what? Suffer what? Persecution. Peter picked it up. He said, after you have suffered a while. Oh, no, no, I don't want that part. I don't want that part. If any man would follow me, he must first deny himself and do what? Take up your what? Cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Hallelujah. I was watching and I'm almost done. These times are wicked, evil, perilous times. You don't know who's who. You don't know. Look, you got Republican, Democrat, independent, fundamentalist, extremist, leftist, rightist. You got something for every flavor that you want to believe in. You know, you got the far left, you got the far right, you got the moderates, you got the uh, almost moderate. Depends on what network you watch. And you need to turn that off sometime. Because this, I'm telling you, stuff is going to come. I don't care what they say. Certain things have to happen. And they're going to, and they're going to happen. But you're not, your trust is not in this world. Set your affections on things above. Where moth and dust does not corrupt. Glory to God. Glory to God. There was a young man I was watching on YouTube. There was a young man in Times Square in New York, gospel preacher, looked like he was about, I don't know, 28, and he was preaching the gospel, had his bullhorn, and he was preaching sure enough gospel, Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, born of the spirit, filled with the spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He was preaching the whole gamut. And here comes a group of Muslims arguing back and forth with him about Muhammad. He stuck to his guns 
They stuck to their guns. Show me in your word. I'll show you in my Quran. And he would bring out scripture after scripture. Finally, he said, look, enough. Where is Muhammad? And he wouldn't answer the question. The young man wouldn't answer the question. This was a young man, too, who was debating him. This was a young man, like 21 years old. He knew his stuff. Young people, know your stuff. Know the word of God. He, this boy knew his stuff from the wrong instrument of learning the Quran. But he knew what he believed in anyhow. And he stood for what he believed. Stand for what you believe. So the young man didn't answer him. He said, well, Jesus died too. In other words, he was acknowledging that Muhammad was dead. And then, and then the one who was preaching the gospel, he said, yeah, but with one exception. Jesus got up. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive, and he's alive forevermore. The young man stood there with his arms folded. And the, and the other guy sarcastically said, you want me to repeat that? He said, no, you don't have to repeat it. And guess what he did? He spit at his feet and walked away. Because he didn't want to hear the truth. But he heard truth. And that day, he'll be held in judgment for what he heard and did not act upon it. And he will not be able to say, I did not hear the gospel. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. They may come at you 10,000 different ways, but you stand and you stand on the word of God. You stand on what you believe in. You let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And God will. I don't think you heard the choir last week. They said, God will take care of you. God will see you through. God will. So be not dismayed. Whatever be tides. That's one of them old, old Elizabethan English words. Whatever be tides. And all they're trying to say is don't worry about whatever happens to you. Don't worry about what you're going through. Don't worry about what the stock market is doing. Don't worry about that, 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 that all the food is left out in, out in the Pacific Ocean still on tankers. Don't worry. God will take care of you. But there's no food on the shelves to shop right. God will take care of you. The value of the dollar is dropping and the cost of living is going. God will. Woo. We better wake up. Dollar bill may not be long, be around very long. Cryptocurrency is on the rise. People are saying, what is he talking about? Cryptocurrency. Yeah, when you can get Tom Brady to come on national TV and put a plug in for cryptocurrency, that means it's on the rise and it's on the move. Right now, when you go on your phone and you want to pay for something online and you want to have your choice of pay as to what you want to pay for that item with, you have your regular credit card or whatever you want to pay, and they've thrown in their cryptocurrency as an alternate source of currency the one world system is just about here, y'all. The mark of the beast is just about here, y'all. Amen. COVID-19 does not give you the mark of the beast. COVID-19 shot. There's nothing in there that's implant some kind of chip in your arm so they can track you wherever you go. They can track you anyhow wherever you go. They can track you wherever you go now. If you don't want them to track you, throw your phone away. And so you go into your phone and you turn off location services. There's still a chip. In. No, I, I, I did that. You ain't going to track me. I went there and, and you go into all those little subtitles and subtitles and subtitles. And you turn off this, you turn off that. 
And so God told me, he said, hey, no, no, go look here. After I turned everything off and I went and looked there and they had everywhere I had been for the last five years. What I had bought, what, where I ate at, what time it was. Oh, yeah, these are the last days. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm not saying all this to scare anybody, but, but, but be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Deacon Webb and I, and I'm done. I said that before. I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> Deacon Webb and I were fishing, and we did many times. And we were in a fishing tournament. And before the tournament, you always go out before the day of the tournament, and you do, like, practice runs. You try to simulate the day and the time of when the tournament is going to be. You try to uh, take an account of what the tide is, if it's high tide, if it's low tide, or is it in between tide. You try to simulate for that day of the tournament uh, what you're going to do. So if the tournament was on a uh, Saturday, then on Thursday we would go out and we would wait for a high tide of what it was going to be on that Saturday. So we could simulate as close as possible uh, what the uh, conditions were going to be. And we would use a certain kind of bank, ba uh, bait and then we would anchor up into waters of what we thought those waters would be on that Saturday. Sometimes, according to the moon, uh, the tide pulls harder or pulls softer according to what stage the moon is in. And then you got all kinds of tides. You got pergy tides where it runs extremely hard. And you, so there's four kinds of tides, and I'm not gonna get into all that. All this just to go fishing? Yeah, all this just to go fishing because you got to, if you wanna catch something, you've got, I'm in his environment now, so I got to do what, simulates catching. But anyhow, long story short, we anchored up the two days before and we noticed that when we threw the anchor, I told Deacon Webb, because when the water is pulling a certain rate of speed, you just can't throw the anchor over the bow. Sometimes you got to throw the anchor to the port side or the stern side, which is the left or the right side of the boat. I told him on this day, throw it over the port side of the boat. Praise God. It took me a long time to learn port and starboard. Jesus, what is port and what is starboard? So then I said, well, starboard it starts with an S. That's the side the steering wheel is on. So I just know the starboard side is the steering wheel side of the boat. So I told him on this day, throw it over the port side. He threw it over the port side, and we anchored up, and he stretched up real good. You can tell when the boat fetches up because it comes to a halt, and the current is just ripping by you. Okay, day of the tournament, we get out there. And on the test day, man, we caught fish after fish, and we was, man, we were going to do good. Well, we were catching some slammers. We were going to do good on tournament day. I can see that $300 prize money. I can see the trophy. Uh, we were envisioning all that we had the right bait. We went out there the very same time on that Saturday. And caught, we didn't catch nothing. We didn't get skunked, as they would say. You needed, you needed uh, 13 fish to measure, to, to be entered into, to, to, to be eligible to, to be measured to win the prize. We caught three fish. Three fish. We did everything that we did before, but this day the wind was howling and the water was dirty and it was not good for fishing but we anchored up in the right place we anchored up like we should have we got on the right numbers and we were patient where we were some guys pull their anchors there's hundreds of boats around some guys pull their anchor and they started going here and they started going there but we stayed where our anchor was in the duration of time that we were there and the fact that we stayed where we were and our anchor held 
we were able to weigh in with three fish. Now, we were thinking in our minds, we ain't going to make it. But we got back to the dock. All the other boats only had two or three fish. Nobody on that day had 13 fish. I left and went home. Deacon Webb stayed there at the weigh-in, and I was kind of like, those three fish, we ain't winning nothing. I left and went home. I get a phone call. Deacon Webb calling me on the phone, Cap, Cap, Cap. He called me Captain, he called me Cap. Cap, guess what? What? We won! And now, no, wait a minute now. Now, you know Deacon Webb, he's full of jokes all the time. You know, he's always fooling around. I said, look, you ain't, you're not getting me with that. I know we didn't win. We only had three fish. Nobody else had it. We had the most weight out of the three fish. We won. Now, why did I say all that? It was just the fact that we threw our anchor. Our anchor held. We stayed where we should have stayed. We did not veer off course. We stayed where we should have stayed. And because we stayed, we were victorious. Be very sure your anchor holds and it grips the solid rock. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And they shall come, Christ is here, and Christ is there, and Christ is in the mountain, and there shall be false prophets. Be not deceived. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. You have to know that you are a servant of the Lord. No weapon is going to form against you, shall prosper. And this is the heritage. That's what I've got going for me. In a day of compromise, in a day of fear and anguish and deception. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Matthews. What a tremendous word today. man said to the servant again, Lord, Lord, open his eyes. He's got to see something. I pray that our eyes are open to see God in all of his glory. To understand the times we're living in. I think Pastor Boone shared that before. The times. They knew the times. That's what it says. And they understood how to navigate in those kind of times. We are who we are because of Christ. You're not that good in and of yourself. It takes him. It takes the spirit of God to pummel you through. Come on, somebody. We see all that's going around. But we know what a mighty God we serve. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Has not given it. If he isn't given to, where has it come from? Where does that spirit of fear come from? 
everything is being moved by spirit. Amen. Songs are being uh, inspired by divination of spirits. Don't let that spirit of the enemy captivate you. Know that you know what you know because he is who he says he is. As you bow your heads right now, oh Lord, our Lord, we are so grateful and so glad that you brought us out. The word that has been given by Pastor Matthews this day has been meant for us to soberly not only receive it, but to act on it. <laughs> You're our God. We don't just say it, but we live it. We live it. We live it. We live it. Our actions, our mindsets lets us know that I choose to serve you. Thank you for the church of the living God all over this world individuals who go beyond just a one day a week lifestyle but every day they acknowledge that without you Lord we are nothing we're zeros You have proven yourself to be so faithful. And so we, as Pastor Matthews has said, we sound the clarion call. We blow that trumpet. We blow that horn by the lives we live, by the words we utter. We stand in the midst and come against the midst of confusion and separation. Because a house divided against itself can't stand. Our eyes are upon you. Lord, I pray that every believer, spirit-filled believer, but hold on to what they know the word of God says. Not a based upon sentiment, not a based upon popularity, but what your word says. We stand against argumentative spirits. I think, I Lord, help us to stand on your word. That our anchor holds, as Pastor Larry said, the anchor will hold. And you will get the glory, the praise, and the honor. Lord, there may be those among us today that don't know you completely. They don't know you completely. They're walking in a partial walk open their eyes let them see they got to be all in partial is not good enough complete totally committed to your word and to you thank you Lord Jesus yes we know you are a healer we know you are a deliverer. Provider, we know this. Lord, 
Let us walk in it. Let us walk in it. Let us act on it. And let your glory fill our lives so that individuals will see the manifestation of what we say so they will be convinced that certainly we are walking with the King. I thank you, Lord. Let the words of our mouths, Lord, and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. We come against that lying spirit, that cussing spirit, that swearing spirit. And our words that we speak, Lord, they'll be edifying. They'll be spoken in love. For thy glory and honor we do pray. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody say amen. You may be here this morning. Those who are watching by Facebook or by Zoom, and you want prayer, you can call the church area code 609 465 pray 465 You may be here, you, you have not made a commitment to Christ. And uh, you're not you're caught. You're not, I, I want to, but, I want to, but, I, I want to, but. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next Sunday. All I'm saying to you, why waste valuable time? Tomorrow, the whining says, tomorrow may never come for you. If that is your desire to begin that walk with Christ, we would love to have the privilege not only praying for you, but sharing with you, amen, that process as we go forth because God is who he is. The privilege of being water baptized in the name of Jesus. The privilege of being forgiven of your sins. The privilege of being filled with the precious, vivacious gift of the Holy Ghost. The privilege of casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. If that is your desire, even this this morning. We just raise your hand. We'll, we'll talk with you a little later on. Amen. And we'll minister to you. Amen. In Jesus' name. We'll do that because that's what, that's what it's all about. This is, this is not a pep rally. Amen. Because when you leave here, you got to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Matthews, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The kingdom thanks you. The kingdom thanks you. Hallelujah. The kingdom thanks you. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. God bless you. Again, those who uh, have not, didn't get, received communion last week, and you desire to receive communion this week. Amen. Uh, evangelists, Anna, you're here. Evangelist Anna and Minister Jeff will be over in this corner right here. It's given about five, five minutes after service over in this corner, and they will serve you communion for those who did not receive communion on last week. Is that all right? Amen. Sisters and brothers, be blessed. Lord, bless you and keep you and fight the good fight of faith and have that anchor holding. Amen. And don't, and don't pull the anchor up. Stay right there. Say right there, let the Lord show you how awesome he is in Jesus' name. God bless you again. Thank you, Evangelist Pelzer. Good to see you in the sanctuary and all of God's people. It's a blessing to see you. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't forget, the, those of you who are going to want turkeys, if you would exit to your, your left, amen, go to the hallway, and they have, they'll direct you. Amen. Now, for those who are unable to count, carry 11 pound or 14 pound turkey don't worry don't fret we have some strong young men a man who will assist you right james some strong young men who will assist them right you too yeah you jonah that's right jonah some strong young men who will assist and carry that turkey for you amen that's isn't that wonderful 
That's marvelous. Thank you so very much. Amen. And govern ourselves accordingly. And the final announcement again on this upcoming Thursday, it will be another turkey giveaway. So please spread it in the neighborhood. Amen. The others that may not uh, be here today and those in the neighborhood, that's not just members of our church. Amen. This is not just us and only kind of aspect. Come on. Amen, somebody. Those of you may know, they need some assistance, please, on Thursday, and that will begin at 10 a.m. on Thursday, 10 until 12. Amen? God bless you. Amen. If you're not getting the turkey after a, a short time period of a very short, un petit time period of intermingling, amen, you want to exit to your, to your left, amen, keep your mask on, put my back on, amen. And,